Hi, my name is Rebecca Reed, and I'm part of the outreach team here at the Fort Worth Museum of Science and History. Today, we're going to look at bird beak adaptations. We're going to be using different tools in this activity to represent the different types of beaks birds have. And then we're also going to be creating different environments where birds live. If you want to work along with me, here's what you're going to need to gather. First, we're going to have our four different bird beak tools. We're going to have a small strainer. We're going to have a pair of tongs, a pair of pliers, and a pair of tweezers. Those are going to be our different bird beaks we're going to use today. Then we're going to create four different environments that we're going to explore. The first is a marsh environment, and for that we're going to use a small bowl or a baking pan with some kind of green leafy, like oregano or Italian seasoning, some kind of herb that you're going to put in that water, and that's going to represent water plants. The next is the pond environment, and there we're going to need a bucket, a small bucket, and then some kind of small plastic like bugs or animals, or if you don't have that, you could use it like some kind of other small plastic toy. Then we're also gonna have a forest environment and that's gonna be a log with some holes drilled in it. And we're gonna use popcorn kernels, unpopped popcorn kernels to represent insects that live in that log. And finally, we're gonna have a prairie environment and that is gonna be a small baking pan and some different kinds of seeds. Once you gather all that, we're ready to get started. We're gonna use each set of tools in each environment and we're gonna see how the different beaks are adapted for those different environments and try to pick out which beak belongs in each environment today. We're gonna to start today with the marsh. The marsh is a type of wetland. It has standing water all the time and marshes can be salt water or fresh water. Now to set up our marsh habitat, we're going to use our tray of water our pan of water and then we're going to sprinkle some uh, some green leafy herbs and if you don't have any green leafy herbs you probably could go outside and get little tiny pieces of grass or a leaf or something to use instead and these represent water plants that live in those those um those marsh lands those swamps areas so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to try our different beaks so the first beak we're going to try today are the tongs so you can see we're going to put those right in the water we're going to try to to grab herbs try to grab water plants and you can see we do get some stuck to it, but we can't really control them. We can't really make sure they get into our mouth where we want them. And so it's not really probably our best tool. Now our next tool we're going to try are, is the little sieve. So we're going to go around, we're going to scoop up, see how that works. And this seems to work really well. If you look, we've gotten a lot of herbs and we're able to control kind of where they go. So now we'll try another tool. We have the pliers. And so we'll try those and we'll see. You can see the pliers actually are really hard. They seem to, to um, the herbs don't even want to go, go near them. So that's not probably our best bet. And now finally we'll try the tweezers. And you can see we can actually pick up just a few at a time, but we'd have to work really hard to, to eat if those were our, if that was our, our beak and this was where we lived. So the best one I want you guys to think if well, you were thinking, what do you think is the best beak for this environment? If you guys said the sieve, you're correct. The sieve is excellent for this environment. You can see it just scoops those herbs, those water plants right up. Now, a bird that has a beak that does the same thing is the duck. And I'm sure lots of you have seen ducks in your community. Ducks have a special beak. If you look on the side of their beak, you can see they have little kind of grooves or little teeth and they use those so they're able to to get up those plants in the water, but they drain out the water. They don't eat all that water and that way they're able to fill their bellies with plants and not with extra water. And so this is a very similar to a duck beak. The next habitat we're going to look at is the pond and a pond is a still body of water. It's smaller than a lake and it's usually shallow enough that there can be plants that are rooted in the ground growing throughout the whole thing. And in this environment, what we're going to use is a bunch of little tiny creatures. I've got all different kinds. If you don't have little plastic animals like this, you can definitely use Legos or some other small little object. Um, and these represent the little fish and the little, and micro, and little invertebrates and things that live in those ponds. Now we're going to look at all our different beaks. Now the first beak we're going to look at is the tongs. And when we are looking and we're trying to get things out of the pond, we have to remember that as a bird, we don't want to get our head very wet. So we are not trying to dunk down into the water. We're not those kind of birds. So today we're first going to use our tongs and those are going to be a nice long beak. And so we can put those in and we don't even have to get our face wet or anything. And we can pick up lots of different animals, lots of critters. 
So this is, seems like a really nice beak for this environment. Now let's try some of our other beaks and see. So the next one we'll try, we'll try the tweezers next. And we'll try, and we can't even get those all the way down to reach anything that's such a tiny, short little beak. So that doesn't really work. Then we'll try the, the pliers. And the same problem, we're just, it's not quite long enough. We can't reach anything in that bottom of that pond. Everything can get away from us. And our last one we're going to try are the sieve. And we're going to try, and once again, we aren't able to reach anything with this type of beak. So... What do you guys think is the best beak for this environment? If you said the tongs, you're right. The tongs are great. And the tongs are similar to a long, thin beak that would you find on a heron or an egret. And so when you look at those birds, you can see they have that long beak that's strong and able to snap down and grab things in the water. They also have long legs so they can walk around on the water and find their food, as well as long necks, so that way they don't have to put their head down into the water to get their food. Next, we're going to head to the forest. Now, the forest is an area where there's lots and lots of trees, and they're the dominant species. And so I'm sure lots of you have gone camping or been to the forest. We're also going to use unpopped popcorn kernels. And you can see those are going to represent bugs that live inside trees. And I'm sure lots of you know that there are birds that eat bugs that live in the trees, um, boring insects. And so what we've done to get this log ready is I've drilled holes with a drill. If you don't have a drill, you are, probably could just use a log that has really thick bark and you could probably find just little crevices to stick those, those bugs in. But I, had made, I made some holes for mine. So you just load up your holes with a few popcorn kernels. And those are our bugs today. Okay, and I, you know what? I'm going to try putting one right there too where I just have a nice divot in the bark. So the first one we're going to try again is our tongs. We're going to try our tongs first. And you can see I just can't really grab anything. I don't have a lot of precision. So next we'll try the sieve. Oh, I knocked one off. But I didn't get it. it. It rolled away. So I can't really use the sieve. Here, we'll put that one back in, too. The way we have all our bugs there. Next, we'll use the pliers. And that doesn't really work too well, either. And finally, we're going to try the tweezers. And they're able to get down in those holes a lot better able to grab grab our insects let's try some more so if you were going to be looking at these what would you say is the best tool to use that's right I would say the tweezers too they're able to get down into those grooves and dig around they're able to dig up those and get those popcorn kernels and get those insects out of those holes, yes. And a bird that has a beak like that would be a woodpecker. I'm sure some of you guys have seen woodpeckers before. They um, peck holes in trees and they're looking, what they're doing, they don't really wanna hurt the tree. What they're doing is they're looking for insects that live under the bark layer of the tree. And um, often those trees are already having some issues and that's why they have insects to begin with. So if you look at that woodpecker's beak, it's strong because it needs to be able to peck those holes, but it's also narrow and able to kind of reach in like tweezers and pick it and get into those holes and crevices and get those bugs. The last place we're going to look at today is the prairie. Prairies are grasslands made up of obviously mostly grasses. They do have some other kinds of plants and occasionally they'll have trees too, but the trees are usually few and far between. So it's a large open area. Um, and the, most of the food source there are seeds, so we're going to be using sunflower seeds to represent that in our prairie. So you just need to put some in a bowl, and the birds that need to eat these seeds, they don't eat the outside of the seed. I'm sure you guys have eaten sunflower seeds before. And when you eat a sunflower seed, you spit out the, extra, the outside part. You just eat the yummy if part inside. The part inside is the part that has all the fat and the energy for the birds, and that's what they want to eat too. So they need to be able to crack open that seed and get to the good part, not just pick it up. So we're going to start with our tongs again, and so we'll see. And I can pick them up pretty easy, but I am not able to crush any of these seeds. I can pick them up, though. 
So that's interesting. Okay, next we'll try the sieve. Once again, I can pick up the seeds, but I don't really have a way of, of, of breaking them. Now we'll try the tweezers and I can pick them up and that's great. And I can squeeze really hard. Let me try again. Ooh, they're hard to even pick up with the tweezers. I just don't think the tweezers are the right job tool. And then finally, we'll try the pliers and you can pick up the seeds. Let's see. And, oh, we're able to crush them too. Let's do another one. So, if you were looking for a uh, bird beak tool that worked best in the prairie environment, which one would you pick? That's right, the pliers. The pliers worked significantly better than the other tools. They were able to pick up the seeds and they were able to crush them so that we could get to the nutritional part in the middle. And birds that have beaks like this are finches and sparrows. And today we have a picture of a sparrow to show you. And you can see a sparrow, it has a, a wide, powerful beak. It's able to grab things and it's able to crush those seeds and eat them. I'm sure lots of you have seen sparrows before. They're very um, adapted to living in our urban environment. So I'm sure it's a common bird that many of you see in your communities. I hope you guys had a lot of fun and learned a little bit about some of the different adaptations birds have. If you enjoyed today's activities, please like this video and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Also, if you have any questions or you want to leave a comment, please do so in our comment section. We'd love to hear from you. Thanks for joining us today.